So hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a very tiny small post bag that contains uh, several items for the LED. Now I think that this segment will just go in between the regular video but just wanted to give you a small post bag. So we've got uh, three items, um, two of them list fans and cooling so you probably might already know what's in here. If I open this, it will definitely look familiar to you. Oh. Just open this. Notice how immediately mess on my desk is. Well, oh well. So fans and cooling. Item number one. Let's Open this up. Yeah, it's uh, quite obvious what this is. Fans and cooling. It's a uh, 12 volt fan. It's the same fan as um, I ordered last time. Because I thought I only needed one fan. But then it turned out that the other fan that I still had was broken. So I decided to order the same fan as it provides well, quite decent airflow and is uh, reasonably silent. And of course it already fits on my light as the light that you're currently uh, seeing is using one of these fans. So yeah, let's go for this uh, fans and cooling package. Now, upon arrival, I started to question the quantity of this item, and I noticed that there was only that I ordered only a single fan, and that's not uh, what I was supposed to do. So I was supposed to order two of these, but I accidentally only ordered one which is quite unfortunate. But there we have it. This is a 24 volt DC fan. I think it's 40 by 40 uh, millimeters. Um, yeah, so let's uh, power this thing up and see if we can let them both spin. Yeah, provides uh, decent airflow. It's really quiet. So yeah, this works. Let's turn it down to 12. Then it will also just work fine. But of course we want to test this fan. So this is the polarity. Yeah, this works fine. It's not as quiet as the other fan. But it is a 12 volt fan, so... I think that if we let it push through a heatsink, it will silent down a little bit more. So, on to the third item, which lists integrated circuit, 300 watt, one piece, but a quantity of two. Okay. A little bit strange, but okay. So let's open this thing up. And let's discover that there are Two, I can feel two. Yes, two neatly integrated circuitry thingies in here. And let's tear them open. For us to test them. Because we definitely want to test these. Now these are 300 watt 
bug boost converters that I will be using as dimmers for the LEDs. The output of the power supply will go into these two things and then with a potentiometer you are able to adjust the output voltage or the output current with a maximum of 24 volts input to the LEDs so that they're getting current regulated instead of voltage regulated. So let's actually just hook them up and have a little test now in plus in minus and plus plus is the yellow one now of course I won't be using these things these wires to connect to the actual LED just for testing now of course I do want the voltage to be stable at 12 or at 24 volts so even when the output load rises and the input uh, drops I do want the voltage to be stable so turned on this thing 11 volts blue LED now which one is for voltage oh doesn't list it so we'll just have to probe Let's see what happens I do actually want one of those uh, trim pot screwdrivers that will fit over the screw and it will make trimming these things a lot easier so if you know a place where you can get them please uh, let me know down below well I think that these are only bug then let's increase the voltage to 24 and a half volts it goes to 21 and a half volt which is okay but the uh, oh no I actually do need it to be at 20 volts not 20 volt but 20 20 volts all right so this is the voltage and this is the current trimmer pot and oh yeah that's actually come up with a load that I can put on here I think I'll be able to just use my uh, LED for a brief amount of time just to see how this thing handles so it should be all connected up and it works now the thing turns red now I'm not sure what that means but let's put this thing into an amperage mode so we can see we can see how many amps uh, it's pulling 4 amps let's trim it so these LEDs are bicolored which is cool the current starts to drop and the output brightness also starts to drop it doesn't get warm just yet Ooh. yes oh yeah <laughs> damn that smells really bad I just forgot to detach these wires so for a second I thought that it were my uh, multimeter probe leads that were smoking but yeah they weren't that was uh, that wasn't really uh, 
the smartest of the ideas that I've had. So let's fix this. Yeah, running uh, about 100 watts to through the, the DuPont cables isn't preferred. I also started to notice that the current was dropping when I increased the current. So I was, I was like, what's going on over here? Until I saw the smoke, obviously. That uh, said enough. All right, we're back. Yeah, I believe it. I don't want to overload my power supply for much longer because I know that the fuse that's in there is not really able to handle the um, input wattage. It's able to handle 10 amps, but that's at 12 volts. And when you output 10 amps at 20 volts, that's uh, what is it? I think that's well, it's not 20 amps, but certainly it's more than 10 amps. But this one is working, so let's test the other one to see if that's working as well. Oh, wait, we do want to trim the voltage first, trim it at 20, 20 volts. This one is loaded down a, a little. There we go, that's better. At 1.7 amps. Let's slowly start to increase it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is also working. So they're all trimmed, they're both trimmed to 20 volts and a certain amount of amperage. First of all, I designed cases for them which I then 3D printed and this part took forever to print because my printer started to fail over and over and over and over on me and that was with a new filament that I just purchased and it didn't work so I ended up trying it again and again and again and again and what was the solution well at least for this print was to tape down the brim on the heated bed so that the part uh, wouldn't lift. A bit of a how you doing solution but I couldn't figure out what was going on with the printer and I suspect the filament being uh, bad. Now these uh, designed parts will go onto or over items like this oh, the heatsink should just fit inside these slots this one is having a little bit of a trouble there you go could have been a little bit wider and now, of course, I already did this one. You need to put a 10K trimmer pot inside here. And then this will also just fit over here. And, well, this actually fits rather nice. And now you might ask, uh, well, how is this thing held together? By the fan. The fan just goes like this in between here. And when you bolt all the uh, four screws of the fan to the case, it will just be a one uh, self-contained piece like this. And you can dim your LED with this trimmer pot. So let's actually do it. Let's actually uh, desolder this uh, trimmer pot. And let's actually replace it with a 10K potentiometer. Before we can actually solder the wires, we do need to bend the leads of the potentiometer. And we need to bend it in such a way that the 
Oh, I'm surprised there isn't like a knob on here. Usually there is a knob that will, well I printed it inside there, that will slide into that hole, but it isn't there on this one. Oh. You need to really make sure that nothing sticks out of the side of the board, because otherwise it won't fit. Uh, but first let's actually test fit it to see, yeah that first fits perfectly. So let's solder them. And just solder them to the potential meter. I was hoping to have a little bit more support of this thing, but. Trim these. And let's remove the potential meter. Now we need to remove this one, which is this one from the other side. Now I watched a video showing oh, how to use is you know I know how to use these things, but they say that you need a higher temperature when using this due to the thermal shock. So I'm at 400 degrees. And let's see if it works. It doesn't really suck it up like that. Cool. So again, I need to go in like this. Let's actually solder them from the top side. Then the wires are already at the top instead of at the bottom. So you want this thing to go with pin 1. Like so. Now I suggest that we give it a little test before we actually install it. And there you go, there's your current reading. Currently it's zero. And when we turn this thing on, we should start to see a current value change. There we go. Put the output up of my lap bench. Well, it works like a charm, uh, I would say. And let's mount this into here. Oh, wait. First, we need to put some uh, nuts in there. And therefore, I've got this nut kit. It's four millimeter um, holes, I suppose. No, three. Is it three, yes, three. Okay. And we need four nuts. Now these are 1.2 millimeters long, um, M3. And of course the nuts just insert them like this. First you'd want to connect the potentiometer to the case. Make sure that it all fits. Now of course put on the washer and then the nut. And tighten it. Now it's time to put on the fan. Oh actually you do need the potential here to be facing down a little bit. But the wires aren't getting in the way of the fan. Now with the fan wire at the inside, 
insert the screws, put in the nuts and screw it all in place. Same for the other side. I didn't really account for the height of the screws, it seems. And this time it seems that it will all fit. Before we actually proceed, we need to connect the fan lead to the input. So, cut the wire, trim the ends. And after you've removed the isolation, just pass the wire of your fan through this hole over here and let's and solder it in place so the minus goes obviously to the minus and the positive goes to the positive And using this method you will always have the fan uh, connected no matter what the state of the input screw terminal is so now we actually need to make a few of these the male one will be the input and the female one will be the output so I've crimped all the required wires which was a little bit of a challenge because I needed two of these and I had I only had one uh, left inside the back but I recycled uh, a cable that I had laying around so I do need to order one of these bags again everything is complete this is well almost assembled the input side needs to be the one with the pins and the uh, blue one is the negative so that needs to go in the middle and just insert the wires into the screw terminal and obviously tighten the terminal output is the female counterpart and again the negative wire needs to go in the middle insert the wires into the terminal blocks like so and make sure to tighten the screws and give them a good pull please keep in mind to hold the heatsink down while doing the pull now comes the oh, challenging part we obviously need to assemble this thing ah, and we do need to remove the wires from the guider over here we need to insert a nut between the heat sink same for this one make sure to retighten this one like so there's your dimmer oh wait it's still not really complete. Ta-da! There's your dimmer. Now it's nice and sturdy. It's protected and it's cooled. So let's um, turn on the power supply and test this thing out. So let's connect it up. Hmm. By the way, this is the first time noticing that there are actually some uh, LEDs defective on this module. I mean, 
if you look, there are a couple that are not really working. And they also stopped working. So I hope you liked that uh, post back and tutorial on how to create the dimmer. Uh, right now we're going to continue with the LED itself. We're going to build it, we're going to assemble it and we're going to test it. So please enjoy. We start off by cutting two equal lengthened wires. These are hard copper uh, two and a half millimeter squared uh, wires. You need to strip them in order for the wiring to be connected to the LED. We do this by guiding the wires through the little holes below the contacts and afterwards we'll bend the wire to make a good contact. You'll definitely want to add some strain relief, so hot glue or anything else, otherwise the pads will come off very easily. Soldering these wires will take a lot of time and a good soldering iron since there's a lot and I mean a lot of material that needs to be heated up. So please hold your patience and make sure to use uh, solder that has a flux core inside it so the solder joint will be nice and clean. Now it's time to strip the other ends of the wires. This is to allow a connector to slide on. We'll be using the MT20 connector, just like the other connectors on my power supply and uh, on my other cabling. Right now I'm creating a uh, full length cable that attaches to the dimmer and the power supply. So make sure to uh, cut two equal length of wires. Uh, also make sure to use the same 2.5 mm squared wiring, since that will be definitely needed to handle all the current. Soldering the connector is relatively easy, but make sure to add the bottom part first so that you don't have to remove the connector again. When soldering, please make sure that the solder flows really well around the wiring and into the connector. And once that's done, you can connect it to your power supply and it should all work. The polarity is labeled on the connector itself, so if you keep that as a reference, it will all work just fine. After 3D printing the casing that you can find in the link in the video description, it's time to set up the buck boost converter. The buck boost converter will be used to convert the input voltage into an output voltage that's suitable for a fan. Now I'm using a 12 volt fan and you want to set it at around 12 volts, maybe a little bit less because the fan that I had uh, ended up being a little bit too noisy for my liking. And once that's done, you need to install the bug boost in the slot that I created for it in the 3D model. And you'll need to solder a 2.5 mm header to the output wires. And the fan connector will just slide on top of that header. Finally, we'll be gluing the 2.5 mm connector at the back of the case. So that will be nice and sturdy when you connect the fan. After that, we'll be installing the heatsink. It should all match the holes that are in the 3D printed case. The holes should be used from the back side and the screw will go all the way through to the heatsink and it should pull the heatsink firmly uh, onto the case. After using some hot glue to add strain relief to the wires of the cop LED, it's time to guide the wires of the cop LED through the case and then you'll want to install the connector that will be used to power the cop LED. The input wires of the bug boost converter should be soldered directly to the cop LED's terminals. Here you can see that the wires will fit exactly into the MT20 connector slots. Make sure to use a good amount of solder and make sure that the solder completely flows uh, through every inch of that connector to have a good and secure connection. Before you slide on the final piece that will prevent the exposed materials from being visible, you might want to remove some of the isolation material since that will bulge up due to the heat. It will barely fit inside the holes for the, for the end piece. Once that's done you can install the airflow guides that will force the air to go over the heatsink instead of all around the heatsink. It will definitely improve your cooling. 
I ended up using some thermal pads as the second heatsink that I've ordered didn't come with a thermal pad. That was a bit of a bummer. But then again, I ordered these 100 by 100 millimeter thermal pads. And after taking down the LED and removing the cop light, it was time to place the thermal pads onto the heatsink and add the LED. Now I'll just show you this time lapse of me installing the thermal pads, so please enjoy. There you have it, there's the thermal pad installed. Now it's time to test out the LED. This is the dimmer without the fan since that was still on its way to my house. And as you can see, the LED lights up perfectly. We're able to dim it without any problems. And the LED feels really cool. As you can see, I started measuring the temperatures and the temperature of the LED got so high at one point that it started to deform the plastic casing a little bit that was without the thermal pads and with the thermal pads i couldn't spot it reaching a temperature above 50 60 degrees somewhere like that so the thermal pads are a must if you want to yeah, use this cop led in a high power situation so thanks again for watching this video i hope you liked it uh, please stay tuned on my channel and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.